Hi, welcome to Minnesota Rocks. I'm Larry England of Public Art St. Paul. Today's Wednesday, June 14th. It's been about two weeks since we last saw what was going on here and a lot of changes have taken place. Today, again, we have Mark Wickstrom to help us. Come on in, Mark. Hello. Now, Mark, it's been two weeks and there's been a lot of things going on. What do you expect uh, folks to see as changes? Well, I think uh, the artists are kind of getting in uh, kind of a mode. Uh, you're really seeing a lot of progress going on right now. Uh, some of the tool uh, problems that we had earlier have been resolved. Um, we've had some of our apprentices from the training program come down and help, and uh, in particular one that's helped out Dwayne Gooden quite a bit with his piece. But uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting. You're going to see a lot of progress from the last time that we went down there. So. There is more detail in each of the pieces. Mm -hmm and they're taking shape and also some of the pieces have been turned so that uh, the, the artist can work on other sides of them. Yeah, that's always been an issue. Moving uh, blocks around that are five to seven tons, uh, that's not something that happens with the snap of a finger, so it takes a lot of calculation. So, uh, And then later on today, we've got also a special guest that we're gonna be talking with. So uh, why don't we go down there and see what's going okay. on? Okay, I think we're gonna go see Jürgen Zahn first. He's from Germany and Germany is about to play the World Cup uh, oh, yeah. in about 20 minutes. So we wanna get him Definitely. interviewed and out of here. Oh yeah, you don't wanna keep a German away from the World Cup, that's for that's sure. That's okay, let's go. Okay, good enough. Okay, we've moved down into the work area and uh, we're here with one of our artists that we haven't had a chance to talk to yet, uh, Jürgen Zahn from Neuss, Germany. Hi. And uh, how are you doing? Fine. Fine. Yes. Max good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, uh, Jurgen, why don't you tell us a little bit about your uh, your pieces you're working on here and how you feel the progress is going to this point. Yeah. One piece is over there. It's always done. Not uh, not all. I have to correct something, mm -hmm. but uh, that's a limestone mm -hmm. here from I think uh, Dolomitic limestone you call this mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah, I worked it by hand in an old-fashioned way. I chiseled it mm -hmm. with a pointer, uh -huh. and the surface is rough. And uh, yeah, it's a figure, an abstract figure. That's my theme. I uh, work with since a lot of years, and uh, yeah, and I made a big figure, a bright, a light one, mm -hmm. and I try to finish also uh, another one, this one here, this okay. black one, that's a gabbro, a mm -hmm. basaltic stone, and mm -hmm. I Quite just, a bit harder. Yeah, a little bit harder. <laughs> 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 it's, it's uh, yeah, another type of stone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started just three days before mm -hmm. with the stone, and uh, I, yeah, I will see how far I will. I, I come. What uh, what kind of a statement are you trying to make with these pieces? Can you fill us in a little bit on the, the artistic, uh, the idea behind the uh, sculpture itself? Yes, um, yeah, I want to want to make two figures, one mm -hmm. black one or dark one and mm -hmm. one light one. Mm -hmm. And if I could talk what I carve, I wouldn't have to carve the stones. Okay. And so uh, I don't make it so concrete, realistic, mm -hmm. so there's enough room for the spectators or for the to visitors to build their own opinion. To interpret. To interpret. Yeah, yeah. Yes. very good, very good. Yeah. That, uh, I, just a question for the people that are going to be viewing this. Uh, to give them an idea, that rough point finish that you have on that piece, how long would you say just the one phase that that took? I mean, just an estimate. Uh, how long it took? Yeah, maybe two weeks. Uh -huh. And I that's just swinging it. with a hammer. Yeah, and a point, simple yeah. point chisel. Yeah, yeah. without uh, electric tools or something like this, without a grinder or. Well, I, I think it's important that the people at home uh, um, watching the show need to know that uh, you know that just the hard work that goes into the whole process. Yeah, and uh, you know it isn't like yeah. that. Not mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, and I worked uh, this stone without. Um, yeah, ready idea or a model. I uh, I modeled it in this direct in the stone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the with the I developed the form during the process, and uh, that's the way I do it. Are you uh, are you pretty happy with the symposium to this point? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure. I, I think uh, our American friends are very kindly and mm -hmm. they care a lot about us and and do everything mm -hmm. to make it right for 
for okay. all the sculpture from, from the world. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a big commitment to be uh, this far away from home for six weeks, I'm sure, and yeah. just like it is for a lot of the other international artists. Yeah, it is, it is, of course. And we're glad that we got to talk to you uh, this time around because uh, we've, we've had our time catching up to you. You've uh, been going here and there and working and, and whatnot. But uh, we understand you've got an appointment this afternoon. That's pretty important. <laughs> yeah, and, okay. Uh, we're going to try to accommodate you. And uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the World Cup is going on. And what team are you rooting for, by the way, in the World Cup? What team? Yeah. I don't know. You don't know. Who, uh, who will it. win the World Cup mm -hmm. now? five, six very strong teams. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite? I think uh, the Portuguese or the Netherlands okay. are pretty, pretty good team. Mm -hmm. well, and there happens to be a game on in how many minutes? Uh, 50 <laughs> minutes, so I, okay. I'm a little bit in a hurry. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, we're gonna accommodate Jurgen. we're gonna let him go uh, and uh, have fun watching the match. And once again, thanks for being a part of the symposium. Thank you, Mark. Yep. Nice to see you. We'll see you next time. Okay. Okay, well, I told you earlier on in the introduction that uh, we did have a special guest joining us today, and I'm here with that special guest right now. Uh, this is Matthew Redabaugh. He's a good Mark? friend of mine. I've worked with uh, Matt for, what, 14 years? At something least. like that? Yep. He works for the Bricklayers International, uh, International Masonry Institute, and he's a special projects coordinator. Uh, Matt is also a, an accomplished carver. Uh, he, as a matter of fact, one of the reasons he's here is because he studied with Pasquale Martini uh, back in the 80s, it was? Mm -hmm. 1989. 90. And, and uh, you learned to carve marble over in uh, Pietra Santa. Is that the That's right location? Pietra Santa. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to go over and uh, have a little uh, discussion. And uh, we're also asking uh, Peter Morales to come along with us. He's going to act as a, an interpreter for us. So. Uh, we're going to go over and uh, visit Pasquale for a little bit here. Pasquale. How are you? Oh, how are you? How are you? Hello. Like old times, he says. Like yeah. old times. Old yeah. Time. yeah, well, we're glad that we could get uh, Matthew to come here and visit you. Uh, it's nice to bring teacher and, and instructor back together ah, to, for a eh, reunion. Es bueno hacer la reunión entre eh, instructor sí. y, y estudiante. Es vero. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> It's true. It's true. A, a man of few words. Sí, sí, es muy importante haberlo revisto. It's so important since I had seen him. Como? Emociona. Oh, he's <laughs> very, he's very uh, touched uh -huh. that, seeing his student. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, I think Matthew probably has some pretty strong feelings for his instructor too. Uh, uh, he's mentioned him to yeah. me before. No, it's um, like I said, I had been carving stone for a number of years prior to, to meeting Pasquale, but uh, all of a sudden I really, uh, really learned what the stone was about. I always remember Pasquale referring to it as you have to caress the stone. Uh, you, you can't brutalize it. You have to treat it like a woman, you have to be gentle. And um, it just, I, I learned so much from him in such a short period of time. He's, he's always been uh, uh, very, very near to me in, in my works. So it's, it's a great pleasure to see him again. It's nice to be able to talk like this, how to say, very freely, no? Yeah, it's nice of him to, to speak like that. <coughs> Io mi emoziono, no? I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very touched by this. So, uh, having a hard time expressing myself oh. right now. Okay. Well, uh, we're going to get uh, treated to a presentation of Pasquale's work uh, later on this evening in the auditorium. And uh, later on, uh, there's also going to be a reception with the artists, and uh, Matt and uh, Pasquale can catch up on some old times, and I'm sure they will. So. Uh, Again, we're very pleased to have you here. And uh, one thing, one thing that I've noticed about Pasquale is is he's he's just a, a working machine. He's, every time you look at him, he's there's dust flying somewhere. He's busy doing something. So. Sempre sta lavorando. Ho sempre voglia di finire perché una volta finito non penso più al lavoro. Dopo vado a spasso, capito? Yeah, so 
yeah, there's lots of, lots of work to do, and uh, you know, once the work is done, then then that's then it's done. So uh -huh. I, uh -huh. I have lots to do. Yeah. Io ho preso è come se avessi nel, nella mia testa un impegno, no? Uh -huh. e, sai, non so come, come si dice in inglese, io sono tarato, nel senso che... I'm very eh, ab obstinate. Eh, eh, sono, obstinate. Sono tarato per un periodo di tempo, no? For a, for a period of time, for a short period of time, very obstinate. <laughs> quindi, and I have a thing in my mind and I go after it. Ecco, quindi entro quel periodo devo finire. And, uh, and then I have to finish it, I can't do anything else but work until it's finished. Mm -hmm. Ecco, dopo mi, mi viene addosso la stanchezza e basta, non, non posso più lavorare, capito? And, and then uh, once it's finished, then, uh, then I feel very tired, then I can't work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Quindi adesso quando avrò finito dormirò tre giorni. When he's finished, when he's finished with the sculpture he will sleep for three, three days. Oh. Get a good, well-deserved rest. Ecco yeah. così. <laughs> Now, Matthew has told me before, I don't know where he got these words of wisdom from, but uh, he told me that sometimes when you're carving on a piece of stone, you run into difficulty, and you can stand there and, and basically beat your head against the wall. And the old trick that he learned was uh, you have to sneak up on it. You have to walk away from it and sneak up on it in a brand new attack. And I don't know if that's something Pasquale eh, has used in the past or... Ma Matthew uh, aprendió y paró de si ha dificultad de continuar en el lavoro. Debe se uh, afast, uh, afastar, uh, ir, debe? debe retirarse del lavoro okay, y, eh, y, eh, y, y retornar de, de otro ángulo. Eh, con, con, con cautela para atacar de nuevo de un ángulo diferente. Sí, en, no he capito el senso. Per, sí, eh... si hay un problema en, en saber qué cosa hacer. Ah, he sí, capito. Sí, sí, sí. sí, sí, sí. Eh, no sé, la palabra para distanciarse del, del, del trabajo y atacar por otro ángulo. Eh bien, él debe dejar de trabajar y comenzar a hacer sí. escultura. Sì, si deve up his work and uh, get, get into sculpture. Uh -huh. Questa, questa è la soluzione, capito? That's la soluzione. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Matt, is there anything you wanted to add? No, it's just great to be here. The, yeah. you know, after all these years, to see him hard at work again and mm -hmm. still making beautiful things. Mm -hmm. It's fun to see him working hard and doing belle. Eh, spero che siano cose belle. Il, il problema è quello. Sì, è cosa bella, è cosa bella. I hope it's, it's a beautiful thing, he says. Oh, yeah, But of course it is, it is. Definitely. So. Uh, if you look at Pasquale's work, I've had the good fortune to uh, view some of his other works, and he's got a particular style that you will see that even shines through on this piece. And um, Matt was looking at it earlier today, and he said he's got those simple forms that he works with, and he's mastered it and uh, it, it's going to shine through on this piece as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're very happy that uh, St. Paul is going to, or uh, I should say, uh, Vadnus Heights is going to get a gift of your work. Uh, sì, it's going to be beautiful. Le, de, de haberle... sí, he's pa always mi, speaking mi beautiful words. That's too much. That's too much. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, um, I guess we're going to wrap up our session here with Pasquale, and I'm glad to see you guys could get reunited again. And I'm sure you're going to have a good time this evening at the uh, reception. Yep. So um, thanks, uh, Matthew, for coming out, and uh, thank you, Pasquale, for, for joining Grazie. us. Grazie. Grazie a voi, né? che siete right. sempre qui.
Do we have some help? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, I want to just make sure it's a C240. Yeah, I got one right here. Oh. You want two? Oh. You like yeah. it? He likes it, huh? Yeah. Tell him I have uh, coarser, too, if he needs coarser, and I have the small, I have the four and a half in the same one. Oh, I get it. I see. Yeah. So it's going to be yeah, upright. Uh -huh. yeah. And is this does this get done smooth like that? Well, it is. Because it goes right to there. Which is about this much. Right here. So now that it does what you want. Hey, it's kind of cool. Oh, did you know? Yeah, yeah, because it's not uh, here. Yeah, yeah. We're here with Peter Morales, and he's working on a, a hard piece of stone, stromatolite. And uh, I understand you've gone through quite a few blades, diamond blades. Yeah, I think I uh, I went through like nine blades just working on the on the bottom part of it. Uh -huh. Well, we we've, uh, we're lucky to have a uh, expert on on site here, and uh, we've got Tom Esch. If it, Tom could come in. Did here. you need another blade, Peter? <laughs> yeah, well, I might need you know two or three a week. Or I was going for a while there. I was going through a blade uh, a day. When wow. I was heavy, yeah. working heavy on it. Yeah. yeah. We're doing all we can to keep the cost low, but this rock is not helping. Yeah, it was, it's it was a chewing. hard rock. Yeah. It's You've used more blades on this rock than any other rock here, yeah. by far. But uh, it worked well. Yeah, yeah. did yeah. the job. Excellent. And, and uh, you want to say something about the piece, Peter? Yeah, well, um, I, I didn't. I wasn't sure how, how much I'd be able to carve it. I knew it was a, a very hard rock, so I'm really surprised I was able to give it as much shape as I did. And, and most of the shape was in the bottom. And then I, I saw the overall shape of the stone, and I figured uh, if I just carved the bottom so that I, it, it would have four legs, the, the figure would emerge. And then <laughs> uh, in the face, which is, you know, it has these two facets here, which make up the face, were existing in the stone as it is already. Pretty, uh, pretty even in each side, and so it was a matter of carving the eyes and the tongue. And uh, now uh, my intention is to polish both the eyes and the tongue so that they, uh, they, you know, they're really a lot darker. You see all the colors in it. There's, there's a lot of red in it. Uh, there's some green in it, and uh, cream, cream colors. It's, uh, it's a really interesting stone. If you look at this stone, there's very distinct layers and bands yeah. through the material. Are there, is there any um, particular bands that are harder than other ones? I mean, you've got hard uh, stone and then you've got bulletproof mm -hmm, stone. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's all pretty much pretty pretty hard through and through. I mean, if 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 you're car you know you're either car carving through uh, quartz, which is which which does you know it's hard, um, or else there's hematite. Which is you know iron bearing, so that's pretty hard too. So it's it's pretty it's pretty hard throughout. Yeah, there were parts that were harder than others. Mm -hmm. There's some chunks of like you know pure quartz that that, that were really hard to, to go through. Mm -hmm. But uh, now the interesting thing about the stone is you know all the layers uh, you know represent you know sediments that that we're collecting you know I don't know billions of years ago. The rock is about. Uh, two billion years old, and you see evidence of uh, algae or cyanobacteria. So th these were non-photosynthetic organisms that were using minerals to get their energy, and they were actually producing oxygen as a byproduct. So these were, it's got it's got the fossils of the organisms that that made it made it possible for uh, most life to. Uh, to exist on Earth, because they started to produce oxygen. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the eyes, you might be able to see it, these little swirls here. 
Mm -hmm. You see these uh, mm -hmm. either cream or, mm -hmm. or red mm -hmm. swirls mm -hmm. are um, these little fingers of, of uh, uh, bacterial growth in, in, the, in, a, in a dark matrix. The matrix has a lot of uh, hematite in it. Now, as far as the process of how it fossilized that way, that you'd have to ask a, a geologist. <laughs> that's it's it's pretty it's pretty involved it's pretty amazing how uh, this very soft organism eventually became you know hard you know really hard stone quart you know quartz uh, jasper something that you can yeah. only cut something with a diamond with, blade with a diamond blade yeah and we're happy to help yeah mm -hmm. yeah diamonds didn't really come on the scene till uh, relatively uh, late do you know uh, what year uh, they started approximately with a diamond blade diamond that is a tools. good question. I don't, I'm not going to make it up. I don't know. It's been several decades for sure. Uh -huh. And they are manufactured diamonds. I know yeah. that. They're not real diamonds. They're manufactured. I do know that. But it's uh, really changed the way uh, that a stone can be manipulated and, and uh, cut. Yeah. So uh, yeah. anyway, uh, we're going to get moving yeah. along, Peter. Yeah. And yeah. thanks Thank for you, your Peter. information. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Thank yeah, you, thanks, Peter. Tom. And uh, we'll catch up with thanks you next time. All right. Good. Thanks a lot. See ya. Thank you. Yeah. All right. It takes a while to get orange rigged up here to work again. Okay. Right, we've run into a nice family here down at the symposium, and uh, I want to ask these kids here, uh, what do you think, what do you, what's your impressions of the symposium? Uh, how do you feel about it? What does it say to you? It's really cool. It must take them a long time to do all that. Uh -huh. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, a lot of the work's been done with hand tools, some with uh, grinders and uh, different machines, but uh, there's some artists that are working strictly with hand tools. It's amazing like how good the craftsmanship is. The what? The craftsmanship. Craftsmanship. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's yeah. a high, high amount of, uh, high level of quality in their works. Uh, to hold a fine line in stone, it takes a lot of talent. And uh, I should get you guys' names. You, you are the Skelly family? Skelly family, right. Okay. Uh, how about your parents? Uh, what, how do you feel about the symposium? It was, uh, it was very nice. My sister and I were talking about coming down to check it out. Uh -huh. uh, it was, it's, it's a very nice little program. It's, uh -huh. it's nice to see that artists out there at their work. It's ni it would be nice to see the final product. Well, these pieces are actually going to have a home in St. Paul, so you're going to be able to go uh, see them whenever you'd like. Um, a short side of two, one is going to St. Anthony Village and one is going to Badness Heights. 
But uh, are there any carvers in this group? Anybody ever tried to carve a piece of anything? Wood? Uh, I've tried wood. You tried I, wood. I've done wood too. Uh huh. Uh -huh. At a summer camp, I made a soap carving. Soap <laughs> carving. But well, you know, once you start carving something, you realize that it's a whole different skill set that it takes. Yeah. Uh, did Did you want to say something about the symposium? <laughs> um, I thought it was really cool that they came out here to show off their work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they're they're from all over the world too, so that's yeah. even neater yet. Because um, to assemble a cast like this with a representation from all over the world, that's a, that's a big effort, and uh, we're really glad that they're here. Rocks, rock. Rocks, yeah. rock. Yeah. Here, folks. Uh, how about this little girl? You got anything to say? No. Can you think of one thing? How'd you like it, sweetheart? Did you like it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, yes. Okay. I, I I think she's impressed with it. So. Um, anyway, just to wrap up, uh, any other closing comments here? Anybody want to say anything? It's creative. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I could do it. Uh -huh. Well, you never know until you try, you know. I, I've often told people, they've watched me carve stone, they say, well, you're an artist, so, uh, you know, it's not really fair to, to uh, assess uh, somebody walking off the street that in, in the same light, but I think everyone's an artist. You just have to find out what you're an artist at. That's right. And you never know if you're an artist until you try to draw, pick up a pencil, pick up a paintbrush. <laughs> so I encourage young people here today to, you know, to, to look into that, you know. You never know you're, if you can draw until you try it. So, all right. Well, thanks for coming down to the symposium, and I hope yeah, you enjoy yourself. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. Yeah. thank, thank you. you. Bye. That's a wrap. <laughs> Bye. This side's a lot better than that side. That side's going in the ground. I just got over here, he's a member of the group. Yeah, we come down to visit with Craig David, and uh, I wanted to talk to him about this piece of stone that he's uh, working on. He's working on a piece of banded taconite, extremely hard material. And you can see he's got a, a wet wheel, and he's polishing a little bit here, trying to bring out some of this vivid color in this piece of stone. Uh, I guess my question is, have you had to change your concept at all because of the hardness of the material? Uh, yes. About a half a dozen times. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the stone is uh, helping, helping uh, direct the process and, and the project, basically the final uh, project. Uh -huh. uh, originally, the concept was to stand the stone up. I've decided that the stone is going to lay down. Uh -huh. uh, but more than that, it's really almost an impossible stone to shape. It's uh, it's brutally hard, and at the same time, it's a very fragile stone. As you remove material, it has a tendency to flake off and 
and it's tough to get a good surface and and thus I've been working on this one surface which uh, originally my intent was to, to uh, polish this surface but now I'm not even certain that I'm going to do that I think uh -huh. what I'm going to do is come up with a, a surface at about a hundred grit and then bring a color enhancer in to, to pull that color out but I don't want a real reflective surface and so uh, and then it'll be installed as a horizontal uh, piece along with a couple benches and a sight uh, a sight piece so it's interesting even watching the rate at which that water dries off of there that tells you that it is a very hard material and doesn't accept uh, very much water no. at all it's just it's fading right in front of our eyes here. yeah so and you never know I mean I've got 12 days to go and yeah. the concept will probably change a couple of times in that in that amount of time also so, uh -huh. so 100 grit that's a, a pretty uh, coarse finish as Speaking of diamond, so to, yes. so to speak. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got diamond uh, grits that go up nowadays to what? Several thousand? Yeah, 3,000 and then a buff, which I did have this buffed out, and you can just see a little bit of the remnants of that. Uh -huh. But I, I really thought it kind of cheapened the, the stone. Yeah. Uh, it For some reason, reason it, it made me feel like the stone was trying to look kind of glitzy. Uh -huh. And this is not a, a glitzy material, and so. I thought, well, I'm going to knock it back, and uh, I want it to be more earthy, basically, is what I'm trying to do, accomplish by doing that. Although I think uh, an enhancer will bring this color out, and we'll see how long it, uh, how long that holds up. Another thing someone suggested is to power wash this, and that would really bring the color out. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, at this point, it's experimental for me. I've never worked with this material before, so... And uh, I think I heard you say earlier that you, you had also planned to do two other pieces with this. Uh... Yeah, this right across the way is that red piece of uh, granite. Yeah. And that'll be, I'll make a couple of benches. I believe they're about 78 or 80 inches long, uh -huh. uh, 16 inches square uh, in terms of the profile. And so that's pretty much, there'll be one on either side of this. Although I think I'll shape them a little. I don't want them real yeah. rectilinear, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, yeah, that's the material that will reflect the, the red color in the stone. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be a beautiful piece when it's all done. Uh, you know, there are certainly some vivid colors in that piece. Yeah, so it's a great piece that. of stone. Yeah. yeah, it is. Well, we're going to move along, and uh, thanks for taking the Thank time. Thank you, Mark. And uh, Appreciate good luck it. to you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. If you want to come down and see what's going on for yourself, we're open from noon to 8 p.m. daily. Last weekend, 600 people walked through here, had a chance to talk with the artists, had a chance to watch creativity at work. This is a remarkable event that we've got going on here, and these artists are very remarkable. You can find out a lot of cool stuff from them, just as the Kelly kids did, and you can have great fun. It doesn't take very long. Uh, you can take as long as you want. So remember, we only have two weekends left, and we're open every day from noon to 8 p.m. Come on down to Minnesota Rock. for a few minutes. We moved along to speak with uh, David Weirich. Yeah. And uh, 
just came in to check in with you and see how your progress is and you can talk a little bit about uh, uh, where you feel you're if you're at where you feel you should be during the, uh, the run of the symposium and, and tell us a little bit about your piece well this is actually the the second piece I was actually moving a little along quite nicely on the first piece and figure I have it about 85 to 90 percent done and I thought well you know there's like three weeks left still. How can I make it a more complete sculpture? Maybe add another stone to the piece. Uh -huh. um, and so I have this this head and a face that's on a long neck piece, and that's going to stand upright, and then it'll dovetail and fit into this portion right here. Mm -hmm. So, so now I'm just kind of—it's not really a base; it's just a, an added element uh -huh. um, to the piece. So, so I think things are going really well in terms of my progress and the amount of time that's left. I think it's—I've got plenty of time. Uh, have the tools been keeping up with you? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah they have. Okay, yeah. Well, that's good. I know some. There's a few artists that had a few issues, but this is a fairly soft stone, so it probably wasn't that big of an issue for you. Yeah, I haven't. You know, I've got a little heat on some of the edges of the saw blade, but nothing. You know, no warping or anything like that. Um, that would. I feel that my life might be in danger. Well, uh, what you've done on your first piece is uh, certainly beautiful. It's going to be a nice. Uh, the second piece here is going to be a nice compliment to that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Actually, the eyes on that piece, I also did some inlays uh -huh. out of a Virginia slate okay. and took them up to about a 3,000 polish, and so they're really black. Okay. And they fit right in the pupil. Oh, okay. And, Great. Uh, so the object stares back uh -huh. yeah. as it looks over the city. Uh, well, I've often told our apprentices that uh, part of the satisfaction of being in, uh, for example, the masonry trades, and uh, even so, more so in, in your line of work, is uh, you're going to work things, work on things that uh, you're going to create that are going to be around possibly three or four hundred years after you're long gone. Yeah. So uh, it is a tremendous amount of satisfaction knowing that you leave a part of a legacy behind. Well, not only that, but hopefully a good looking the legacy. Yeah. You know, something that's not just uh, going to fall apart in 200 years. That'll be lit. Be here longer, and, and we'll, you know, the craftsmanship will be there. Um, that it's not just stuck together with glue, and that it, that it will survive that time. Well, yeah. Plus, you're, you're uh, as an artist, you can certainly make a statement that you hope is going to carry on through the ages, right? Uh, through your work, right? Absolutely. That, that is a very important part of being an artist. So, um, yeah. Anyway, then, any other, any other things you want to talk well, about? And piece? if the foliage should take over the sculpture, it'll just remain hidden that much longer until somebody rediscovers it. Well, yeah. Then it'll be uh, <laughs> uh, all again a new adventure. Yes. So uh, yeah, that's a possibility too. Well, uh, thank you a lot for your time, yeah. and uh, we'll be stopping back and checking in with you. Anytime. Thanks a lot. We're here with a couple of uh, visitors to the symposium site. We have Michael and Rose, and uh, we just wanted to stop and talk with them a little bit and see what their feelings were about the symposium. Uh, first off, what brought you down here to the site today? Well, you know, last week there was that big, like, rock and bead expo at the fairgrounds, and, okay. you know, a friend of mine went and told me about all this cool stuff she saw, so, uh, okay. you know, I just kind of got a, inclined to go look at some rocks uh, and then I remember back you know in high school we used to carve the, in the sandstone cliffs uh -huh. all, all sorts of pictures and things and uh, I just kind of came out to see what professionals do mm -hmm. um, and I live right down the street so, oh okay you know. well, so it's right in the neighborhood yeah. so. well, well uh, speaking of that what's uh, what's the uh, irritation rate been like has there been any kind of fallout as uh, these guys are making too much dust or noise or no, I haven't, haven't really heard all, anything no. well that's good to know yeah. It's always nice to know what the neighbors think when you're conducting an event like this. <laughs> yeah. uh, Rose, uh, what, what do you have to say about this symposium? Oh, it's very interesting. Um, can't wait until they're done so I can see the final projects. Yeah, and you might actually get one of these uh, pieces of art in your uh, close neighborhood as far as a, oh. a, a final resting place for it. Okay. There are 28 sites picked out in the city of St. Paul that uh, are, have a potential to receive a piece of artwork. So. Uh, it's okay. going to be exciting, yeah. uh, not only in the creation part of this event, but also uh, in the long uh, running um, the future of the, of the city. You're going to have artwork all over the place. So. Yeah, and oh. it gets people thinking about St. Paul as, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere to come and see art. Mm -hmm. uh, can't go wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's a big boost for the city, yeah. and uh, uh, hopefully it's going to raise awareness of, uh, of public art uh, all over. So.
Any other comments? Oh, no, I guess that's about it for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, thanks. we'll let you go, and uh, thanks for taking the time. Yeah, yeah thank you. Lourdes. We're here with Lourdes Q. She's uh, our female artist working uh, on, a, I believe it was canoes you're working on uh, out of granite? Uh, kind of canoe kayak. Kayak, okay. Yeah, right. this is the seat that is going to contain water. Mm -hmm. And uh, how do you feel your progress is at this point? Uh, 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 it's going slow, but mm -hmm. it's, it's surely. Mm -hmm. Slow but sure. Yes, absolutely. Okay. It's, it's a harder stone than I thought. Uh huh. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I know we've uh, we've had one of our apprentices from the Bricklayers program down here helping you, and uh, we're looking to get him back here. Was he oh, uh, a good value to you? And uh... Uh, Joe was uh, mm -hmm. uh, very caring with the tools mm -hmm. and very good with them, mm -hmm. and he knew what he was doing. Uh -huh. So I hope he's going to be back soon. Well, I th we think it's a good combination between, you know, the tradesmen that are trained with uh, using these type of tools every day, but right. they're not necessarily using them in an artistic vein. But uh -huh. uh, with your guidance, with the artist's guidance, uh, they can certainly be in an assistance too. Absolutely. And I know that, uh, you know, your guys know what they're doing. I just need somebody a little more sensitive with, mm -hmm. with the stone and the tools. Well, yeah, I'm sure artwork is uh, something that you, you don't rush into either. Even right. in the uh, stage of preparing a model, uh, you have to take your time and uh, uh, let that uh, compassion and, and all those emotions uh, flow in that whole process of it. Um, are there any other concerns that you got at this time? Uh, not really. Mm -hmm. You know, the hardest part is to start. Mm -hmm. But once you're in it, yeah. you, you keep going. It gets easier and easier as you go. Yeah, uh, that's the same thing as with a, a, a skilled trade. Is the hardest part is starting, and and uh, once you get going, uh, it's like riding a bike. You know, you never forget how to ride a bike, but uh, you don't start riding a bike real fast. I mean, you, you pedal it away and you fall down. And uh, I'm sure with any task, uh, it, it, it is similar to that. It, so. it takes time to know your stone, to have patience with it, uh -huh. to get to know it, to get to understand it, mm -hmm. and then things start developing by themselves so you're, you're saying that what I'm reading into this is kind of like a, a stone can really have its own personality oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it has a, this stone has a lot of character it, it still has a lot of character yes yeah. okay. all right well thank you for taking some time to speak with us Lourdes uh, one thank more you. question before I go was this going to be a, a polish to offset or it is going to be polished okay so I'm yeah. working with contrast Okay. and textures, different textures, different contrast, and it's going to go embedded in the ground okay. with a sense of movement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see the polish and the rough texture right next to each other. That'll be very nice. Okay, well, thank you for well, your time. Thank you, Mark. And we'll be stopping back Come and back checking. Come back sure. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
Well, we've got some visitors filtering through the symposium today. We just uh, bumped into Katie here, and uh, we thought we'd stop her and ask her about her opinion of the symposium and uh, what actually brought you down here. Well, I'd seen the banners in downtown St. Paul, that's where I work, and I just think it's a really fun opportunity for the public to be able to see this kind of art in action, you know. Mm -hmm. Not only is it great for the city to get some nice commissions of public art, but the public rarely has a chance to see something this cool. Mm -hmm. It's great that it's outside, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, th there's not a lot of people that uh, really appreciate public art for what it is. Uh, you know, people walk by uh, different art pieces all the time and they don't, you know, pay attention that they're there. but. Hopefully this event is going to raise the awareness of that and uh, these people are actually going to be looking out where the final resting place is for these mm -hmm. pieces. So. Yeah, I also think it's so important that I have an opportunity to interact with the artists themselves and that gets them to look at public art in a different way, I think. And do you have an artistic background? or? No, I've always been a lifelong appreciator of the arts. Okay. All right. uh, anything else you'd like to share with us today? No, I just encourage the people in the Twin Cities to come down and check it out. It's a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. And you're a St. Paul resident? Or? Well, I'm actually a Minneapolis resident, but oh, there you go, the city Jay. of Minneapolis, maybe you should steal <laughs> an idea this cool, but I work in downtown. Okay, all right, mm -hmm. great. Well, thanks for taking the time sure, to speak thank to you. Good, yeah. luck. Good luck. Hey guys, I wanted to stop you and talk to you a little bit about uh, what are part of your duties here. It looks like you're over here with a sledgehammer and you're busting up some of the waste material. Yep. Could you tell us about that? What have you been told to do? Um, well, basically we're on site and uh, pretty much like five hour shifts a day. And when the artists have a, uh, a pile of rock that they have uh, taken away from their uh, particular piece, we take a wheelbarrow, me and Charlie, and we go and pick up all these rocks and uh, put them in that red dumpster behind us and I'm pretty sure they're going to be recycled later. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, this, this waste material makes uh, excellent like uh, crushed material for roadbed, okay. uh, things like that. Uh, concrete, uh, maybe not the limestone, but other stones that make a good aggregate for concrete. Yep. Uh, what do you guys think of this event so far? It's been going great. Mm -hmm. We've been here about most of the days, at least five days, six days a week, and uh -huh. just great to see the progress and a lot of people coming through. It's been been a lot of fun being part of it. Uh -huh. Well, uh, I don't know if you feel the same way I do, but I think uh, St. Paul is very fortunate to have uh, you know this event coming to this town, and yep. uh, you know we're going to have a lot of wonderful pieces of artwork scattered around the city after this is done. That's with. the best part about it, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Definitely working here and seeing all the stone that they've uh, that they've taken away. We've 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 been there pretty much every step of the way through some of these artists and just seen seen how much rock they actually take away from these these pieces and so, just to make something out of it. So if anybody could see uh, a gradual change take hold, it'd be you guys because you've been here every day. Yep. So you see a little uh, subtle change and then pretty soon there's a finished work of art. Exactly. Okay, guys, well, uh, we're going to uh, move along, but uh, thanks for taking the time to uh, talk to us. Thank no you. Yep. Thank you. Okay, well, that just about does it for this fourth week of the symposium. Remember, the symposium is going on until June 30th. And we're open from noon to 8 p.m. daily, so you can come down and watch these artists at work. Uh, Mark, it was a pretty good day, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a really interesting day. There was a lot of uh, progress made since the last time that we've been here. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's really good and encouraging to see that uh, some of these artists are getting pretty confident in their ability to close in on the finished product in a six-week time frame. Um, one of the highlights for me was having uh, Matt Redabaugh, our special guest, come in today. Um, came in from Washington, D.C., and uh, he was uh, actually a student 
under the uh, guidance of uh, Pasquale Martini, our Italian artist. So it was really great to see those guys uh, be able to reunite after, uh, you know, 20 some years. Wow. And uh, uh, see the lasting impression that it's left, that friendship that was forged out of that uh, kind of a mini symposium back at that time. Um, anyway, that's about all I have for uh, right now. And uh, we'll be back next week and we'll, uh, we'll uh, interview some artists again. We'll, we'll check on some progress and uh, hopefully some, see some really interesting things again. Okay. Well, we do have a couple of special events that i uh, let you know of. Each weekend, uh, Historic St. Paul is going to be doing some architectural tours. You can go to the calendar on our website to find out just when that is. Uh, and next Wednesday, June 21st, we'll have a presentation by five of the artists here at the St. Paul College Auditorium. That starts at 5 o'clock and there's a reception at the uh, College of Visual Arts Gallery at 7 o'clock on that day. You can go by to the College of Visual Arts Gallery every day to see an exhibition of other work by each of these artists. So until next week, I want to thank you for tuning in. Come on by if you can, and thank you and good night.